In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to get 15,000 downloads on your podcast. I did it and I feel like you can too. I'm not some famous person. I'm not some famous podcaster. I just found that I had an idea and I wanted to share that idea with others. And I'm going to help you with three tips that you can take home today on how you can get over 10,000, 15,000 downloads on your podcast. Stick around to the end of the video. We're coming up on two years of The Violin Podcast, which is a podcast that I host, I created. And it's a podcast where I speak to violinists from around the world doing amazing things with their careers and helps with uh, violin practice tips, some extra news, and career guidance. My goal today is that I'm going to share with you three tips on how you can become a better podcaster, how you can get uh, more listenership to from 10,000 downloads to 15,000 downloads. To give you some statistics, I have about 40 episodes as of this recording. I've been doing this consistently for two years. So I've been doing an episode every two weeks just because I also have various performance engagements. I teach the violin as well full time. So for me, I felt like every two weeks was like a healthy balance for me to get some content out there, but also not overwhelm my audience every single week with a new episode. Because right now, I'm just a one-man show. I'm doing this all by myself, when including the editing, uh, the video production, you know, scheduling the guests. It can be very overwhelming <laughs> as, you, um, as you start getting into the, to the wormhole of po the podcasting world. The first question you have to answer, why do you want to start a podcast? For me, I found value in talking to other violinists and learning from other violinists because that helps me become a better violinist as well as a better teacher because I teach full time. I teach from ages five to 50, believe it or not. I have a whole age range of students. So for me to explore um, different ideas with other guests that come on my podcast, for me, it's kind of like my own research that I like to implement on this podcast. And if you have a podcast or you're thinking about starting a podcast, I recommend that you start with a very specific niche. Once you have established that niche, you know, there's a saying called the riches are in the niches. So if you really find a niche that you are absolutely passionate about and you have a lot of knowledge, I recommend you stick with that niche and something that you obviously enjoy will help make the process very, very fun. And the reason why I say this is because you want to do something that you enjoy so that way your audience can hear the passion in your voice when you talk about your specific topic. For me, it's the violin. I love talking about the violin. I love speaking to different guests, exploring different ideas. That is what gives me joy and that's what I hope the listeners of the Violin Podcast get out of me. So number one, find a niche that you are really passionate about, that you have a lot of knowledge in, so that way you can continue getting more listenership. I don't have a lot of listeners on the Violin Podcast at the moment. I average around 200 to 300 listeners, but you know, depending on what kind of guests that you invite, uh, for instance, I had a guest that has about 800 uh, listeners and uh, some of them are 200, some of them are 300, 500. So as you uh, build your, your content up, you know, I have around 40 episodes or more than 40 episodes, then you know, people will start trickling in and then you wanna start promoting that evergreen content for the long term. If you're very serious about podcasting and about your niche and you wanna get into it, it's not a short term gain. You're not gonna make a lot of money by podcasting uh, in the, in the short term, you might get some sponsors, you might get some, you know, sponsorship ads and whatnot. And that can help like cover the, the website maintenance fees that are like 15 to $20 a month, which is really not that much. But what I would love for you to focus on is to really, uh, get quality guests that can help you and help your podcast because you want to be treated seriously for your podcast for listeners to come back. Now you might be wondering 200 to 300 people. That's not a lot of people listening to your episode, Eric. Well, imagine this. Imagine that you are in a room of 200 people. It's a very different situation, right? I want to switch that perspective on you because just because you have 50 people, 100 people, 200 people, 300 people listening to you, you have an entire room that has your attention. And that is so cool about podcasting that I've discovered in recent years 
is that it's um, you're you're expanding your listenership, you're engaging with your listenership. I love getting to know my audience and learning more about what they want and what they crave and what kind of um, content that they're looking for. And it's a, it's a back and forth exchange that the 200 people that I'm serving every every other week, um, every two weeks, the 200 300 people there are getting a lot of value and those are the ones that are coming back for more content because at the end of the day these numbers represent human beings they're not just numbers they're not robots listening to your podcast these are actual human beings that are interested in learning about what you have to say another tip that i would recommend for you to expand your podcast and to reach 10,000 15,000 downloads of your podcast when you're starting out is to uh, stay consistent it's very important for you to stay consistent because you want that continuing listenership to follow you and you want them to uh, engage with your content. If you're promoting uh, episodes every once in a while, which, you know, it has happened to me that sometimes I kind of fall off the bandwagon because running a podcast is a lot of work. Sometimes I would, you know, be silent for a couple of weeks and it's, uh, it's, it's not good. You don't get that listenership. Uh, coming back. So you want to stay consistent. Also, you want to get into the groove and start having some kind of schedule, some kind of system that can help you be more efficient in creating a podcast and establishing a podcast, establishing a name for you. A lot of these skills I had to learn. There are a bunch of softwares out there that I use and you know some of them work, some of them didn't and you go as you learn. Also, there may be moments where you feel discouraged that you're not getting a lot of listeners, but at the end of the day, you know, when you're thinking one year, two years out, you will get that listenership if you stay consistent, if you promote your podcast on relevant platforms on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, whatever your audience is, I want you to capitalize on those platforms in which you have engagement, you know, you have followers, you have listeners. And believe me, if people are not listening now, you have that content that you own that people will come back to listen to. So don't feel discouraged if you're not getting listenership right away. Think long term. We have two points that we already established is to find a niche that you're passionate about and you're comfortable speaking with that you have a lot of knowledge. And the second one is about being consistent. Third tip that I would recommend is to find a time of day where you are the most focused. Now, what do I mean by this? You wanna find a time that you are fresh so that way you can stay creative. You have around two hours, two or three hours in a day where you can feel at your, at your best and you're really, really fresh to create and find really cool ideas for your podcast. For instance, my creativity is around the afternoon, like 12 to 1 p.m. And I find that I come up with really good ideas. I, you know, am most productive when reaching out to guests around, you know, between 12 and 2 p.m. Actually, right before my teaching, believe it or not. And because I, I teach in the afternoons, I don't want to be creating ideas or creating content in the moments where I'm really tired throughout the day because your mental health and your physical health are very important because if you're gonna be running a marathon, those are things that you have to really be considerate of. I encourage you to explore whether or not you're most active in the morning. I used to be, not anymore, but I'm in the afternoon. Or if you're a night owl, I encourage you to be creative in the night and to lay down your ideas and come up with topics and reach out to people who wanna be on your show or you know, think of some content ideas so that you can have a good and excellent podcast. Those are the three tips I would recommend for you to get 10,000 to 15,000 downloads. And it may seem like a huge, huge goal, but I've been doing this podcast journey for about two years and I have a blast. I know that 10,000, 15,000 may not be a lot to some people, but that just to tells me that there are 15,000 people that listened to these episodes, my content, my ideas, and they keep coming back for more, which really, really inspires me to continue um, reaching out to my audience and providing really good content for my audience. I hope you found this video valuable. 
My name is Eric. I do a lot of violin content on the channel. If you're not a violinist but enjoyed this video, hit the like button. And I also on occasion do content like this, so please make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification, so that way you get notified for when new videos like this come out. Helps me out, helps the channel out to provide more videos for you. Also, if you want to check out some other Anchor tutorial videos or other podcast videos that I have on the channel, I encourage you to check out these videos right over here. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next one.